So, we look to our householders, ask Buddha to give a Dhamma talk which would enable them to be reborn in celestial worlds. And Buddha taught the seven precepts. And these seven precepts are to be practiced applying to oneself. That means relating to oneself and then apply to another. So these seven precepts I think are just enough. So if anyone keeps these precepts, these seven precepts, I think he is uh, to be reborn in celestial worlds. But Buddha did not stop there and he, he went on to add four things to the seven already mentioned. And these four things are actually called Sota Pati Yanga in other sotas. That means the qualities which a Sota Pana, uh, after reaching the Sota Pana foot, acquires. So with the, with the seven uh, precepts already mentioned, a disciple will not be reborn in hell and so on, but there is a possibility that the disciple may be reborn in hell because there is what is called apara pariyaya vidaniya kama. So kama that gave results in the future lives uh, from third onwards. So uh, everybody has that aprabriya uh, huidiniya kama in store for him and so he may be reborn in hell as the result of that aprabriya huidiniya kama. So Buddha want to make them definite or fixed that they will not be reborn in hell and so on. And so I think uh, Buddha Father taught the four, say, four qualities or four states. Now Buddha called these here the desirable states. So desirable qualities or desi uh, desirable states. So he said, he possesses confirmed confidence in the Buddha thus. The Blessed One is Arahant, perfectly enlightened, accomplished in true knowledge and conduct, fortunate knower of the world, unsurpassed leader of persons to be tamed, teacher of devas and humans, the enlightened one, the Blessed One. Now here are also the traditional nine attributes of the Buddha is mentioned here. And he has possessed confirmed confidence in the Buddha. Confirmed confidence means stable and unshakable confidence in the Buddha. So a person who has, who is said to be endowed with confirmed confidence in the Buddha will never say that the Buddha is not the Buddha. Even at the risk of his life, he will not say that the Buddha is not the Buddha. So such firm belief or such firm confidence he has in the Buddha. He possesses confirmed confidence in the Dhamma thus. The Dhamma is well expounded by the Blessed One, directly visible, immediate, inviting one to come and see, applicable, 
and to be personally experienced by the wise. Again, this is also the meaning of the six attributes of the Dhamma, Swakato, Bhagavata, Dhamma, and so on. So he has confidence in the Dhamma thus, and he has confirmed confidence here means also the unshakable confidence. So even if someone were to come to him and say, I will kill you if you do not say Dhamma is not Dhamma, he will say, no, I will not say Dhamma is not Dhamma, even though if you kill me. So at the risk of his life, he is well-established sadha in the Dhamma. He possesses confirmed confidence in the Sangha thus. Again, this is the nine attributes of the Sangha. The Sangha of the Blessed One uh, disciples is practicing the good way. So practicing the good way is one attribute. Practicing the straight way, another attribute. Practicing the true way, yet another attribute. And practicing the proper way, another attribute. Four attributes here. And then the four pair of persons, the eight types of individuals, because there are Sotapati Magha Basin, Sotapati Phala Basin, Sagragami Magha Basin, Sagragami Phala Basin, Nagami Magha Basin, Nagami Phala Basin, and Arhata Magha Basin, and Arhant. All together, eight types of individuals, and they are four pairs. So the four pairs of persons, the eight types of individuals, this Sangha of the Blessed One's disciple is worthy of gifts. So this is one, worthy of hospitality, two, worthy of offerings, three, worthy of reverential salutation, four, and unsurpassed feel of merit for the world, five. So uh, the former four and these five all together make the nine attributes of the Sangha. And this disciple has the confirmed confidence in the Sangha. Again, confirmed confidence means unshakable confidence. So unshakable confidence in the Sangha. So he has Firm, confirmed confidence or unshakable confidence in the Buddha, in the Dharma, and in the Sangha. And it is said that the confidence of a person who has reached the Sota Bhadi Magha is the same for the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. So that means it is not that only respect for Buddha is great, and respect for Dhamma and Sangha are not, not great and so on. Not like that. So he has the same respect for all three gems of Buddhism. And number four, he possesses the virtues dear to the noble ones. Unbroken, untorn, unblemished, unmortaled, freeing, praised by the wise, ungrasped, and leading to concentration. Now here, the virtues means the five precepts, not killing, not stealing, and so on. So these five precepts he kept, and here it is said that these five precepts are dear to the noble ones. So the noble ones keep these precepts even when they, when they pass away and are reborn in another world. So, a Sotapanna is one who will never break the, any of the five precepts. They are so dear to them. And then, unbroken, untorn, unblemished, and unmortaled. That means they are not uh, broken, say, there are five precepts. So s suppose one, two broken, or four, five broken, 
So uh, that is unbroken. Uh, that is broken and that uh, one to unbroken and so on, that is called unbroken. And untorn. Untorn means one and two broken and three and four broken. So in that case, it is torn. It is not like that. It is untorn. And then unblemished. Unblemished means one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, like that. So if he breaks like that, one, one, two inconsecutively, or two, three consecutively, and so on, he is called blemished. And if he is not like that, then he is unblemished. And unmortal means the one, three, and five. So one, three, and five uh, broken, then it is called mortal. So if it is not like that, then it is called unmortal. So <clears throat> in, in short, he keep these five precepts uh, very strictly and not any one of them is broken. And these five virtues are freeing. So freeing free means free from being uh, the slave of uh, attachment. Now, uh, when attached to uh, when attached to to be reborn in the in the good state, a man will keep these precepts. So in that case, he is said to be not free. The precepts are not free in that case. But here it is free and so he keeps the precepts simply because it is good to keep the precepts and not that he desire to be reborn in Deva world and so on. So yeah, that is called here freeing. And then praised by the wise, uh, that is uh, easy. Praised by the wise men such as the Buddha, Pajika Buddha, and so on. And then it is ungrasped. Now ungrasped here means also uh, not grasped by Tantna and Deity. When people keep these five precepts, again, say they, they wish to be reborn in celestial beings, and that is called grasped. Here, the five precepts are not kept like that. They just keep the precepts and just that. And so they are ungrasped. And then the other meaning, since he is free from breaking any of these rules, it cannot be said that here you transgress this precept, that you transcribe, and there you you break that precept, and so on. So when it is not able to be said that you break this here, you break that there, then it is called uncraft. And then leading to concentration, that means leading to excess concentration, leading to neighborhood concentration, leading to maga concentration, leading to pala concentration. <clears throat> So leading to concentration. This uh, sila, purity of sila leads to concentration and this is to be noted. Because without the purity of sila, no one can come to concentration. So if there is to be concentration, there needs to be purity of sila. Only purity of sila leads to concentration which is purity of mind. So purity of sila is important and a necessary condition for concentration to arise and only when there is concentration then there will be penetration into the nature of things. When householders, the noble disciple possesses these seven good qualities and these four desirable states. 
No, seven good qualities is abstention from taking life and so on. Uh, three for bodily, bodily transgression and four for uh, verbal transgression. Altogether, seven. So these seven are called good qualities. And the four desirable states, four desirable states are the unshakable confidence in the Buddha, unshakable confidence in the Dharma, unshakable confidence in the Sangha, and then the virtue or sila, which is dear to, to the noble ones, and so on. So if he is endowed with uh, these seven good qualities and these four desirable states, that means he has become a sotapanna. So if he wishes, he could by himself declare of himself. So if he wishes, he could declare that I am one finished with hell. That means I am one who is not going to be reborn in hell. Finished with the animal realm. Finished with the domain of ghosts. Finished with the plane of misery. The bad destinations, the nether world. So he can declare himself like that. I am and not to be reborn in hell, in animal kingdom, in the domain of ghosts, in the plain of misery, and that is bad destinations, and that is the nether wall. So he will not be reborn in the four woeful states. That he knows himself, and he may declare himself like that. And also he may declare himself, I am a stream enterer. That means, I am a sotapanna. Now, stream enterer means, who has entered the stream and now in the stream. And the stream means the maga. So maga is called stream here. And I am a stream enterer means, I have entered th that stream and now I am in that stream. No longer bound to the nether world. That means, not liable to be reborn in the uh, nether world or in the four woeful states and fixed in destiny. That means he is fixed so that he is bound to reborn in good states and not bad states. At least fixed in destiny means he will not be reborn in woeful states and with enlightenment as my destination so he is sure to reach his destination which is enlightenment now in the Pali uh, the, the last word is Sambodhi Parayana so Sambodhi means enlightenment and so, Sambodhi Prayana means enlightenment as uh, one's destination. As it stands, it looks like the Sotapanna is yet to get enlightenment. But actually here, enlightenment means the upper three phases of enlightenment. Because since he is a Sotapanna, he has reached the first stage of enlightenment. After reaching the first stage of enlightenment, he will reach second, third, and fourth stages of enlightenment. And so, although the word means here, uh, enlightenment as my destination, we must understand that it means mm, higher enlightenment as my destination. So from this passage, we know that Isotapanna is free from rebirth in the four woeful states, and he is sure to reach the higher stages of enlightenment. And here we must understand, he is no longer bound to the nether world, or he is free from the woeful states, 
because he does not do anything that will cause him to be reborn there. So that we must note. Not that he does the things uh, that will lead him to woeful states, but he, because he is a sotapanna, he is not reborn there. That is uh, not like that. He is not reborn there. He is not reborn in the four woeful states simply because he does not do anything that will lead him to rebirth in the four woeful states. Now, there is no mention of meditation in this discourse. But in order to be endowed with the four desirable states, that is, unshakable confidence in the Buddha and so on, one must become a sotapanna. And in order to become a sotapanna, one must practice meditation. So, although meditation is not mentioned in this sutta, we must take that without meditation, the sotapanna hood cannot be obtained. So, some way in their lives, See, after keeping the precepts, they must practice meditation. And that is why uh, they practice meditation and they possess the four desirable states, uh, such as unshakable confidence in the Buddha and so on. And that is why they are not reborn in uh, woeful states. So when this was said, the Brahmin householders of Bamboo Gate were pleased with the, pleased with what the Buddha taught and take refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. And here it is said that magnificent Master Gautama, magnificent Master Gautama, the Dhamma has been made clear in many ways by Master Gautama. As though he were turning upright what had been turned upside down, revealing what was hidden, showing the way to one who has lost, or holding up a lamp in the dark for those with eyesight to see forms. So Buddha gave the Dhamma talk that was like turning upright what had been turned upside down and so on. So that, that means the Buddha said very clearly. And so we go for refuge to the to Master Gautama and to the Dhamma and to the Bhikkhu Sangha. So only now they go for refuge to the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. Let the Blessed One remember us as lay followers who from today have gone with life for refuge. Now, gone with life means even at the risk of one life, one mm, will take refuge in the Buddha and so on. So that means if someone were to come and say, Buddha is not the Buddha, Dhamma is not the Dhamma, Sangha is not the Sangha, they will say, no, I will not say that even though you kill me and so on. So that is called gone with life. So they said, let the Blessed One remember us as lay followers who from today have gone with life for refuge, for refuge in the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. This passage, uh, Magnificent, Master Gautama, and so on, is actually a stock phrase again. When in the discourses, a person goes to the Buddha and listens to his Dhamma, and when he is delighted, he would say this, Magnificent, uh, Master Gautama, Magnificent, Master Gautama, and so on. So this has become a stock phrase, and so actually in the Sutta it is, it is not mentioned. But I take from other Suttas and, and make it complete here. So with these, Brahmin householders of Bhamukhet were uh, pleased with the uh, Buddha's Dhamma talk, and they went for the 
the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha as refuge. So this is the end of this uh, Sutta. Now, the handouts are given, and do not think that you will find this handout in this form in the book. That means, take care, I mean, <laughs> because here in, in, in the handouts, like within the brackets, right? Square brackets. So those are actually not in the books. But I try to find those in, in other sodas and then bring it here and make it a complete whole. So this transcript is not the same as the one you will find in the book. And also it is for you difficult to fill in those those that are not mentioned here because you have to find where it was said, uh, where first it was said in the book, and then you take that. So it is not easy for most people say, to get all of them. And so I, here I uh, make it uh, to be complete. And there is one mistake to be page three, last line. Thus, this verbal conduct, not his. Thus, this verbal conduct of his is purified in three respects. I try to have the handout to be without mistakes, but still, I made a mistake here and there, and I cannot help. So, end of the uh, this talk. Sadu, sadu, sadu. This sutta in C, D, B. That means connected discourses of the Buddha. It is a translation of the Sayodha Nikaya, page seventeen ninety six to seventeen ninety nine. Open for questions, Monday. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Monday is open for questions. À, kính thưa quý vị là quý vị có câu hỏi nào thì sư sẽ à, lắng nghe và trả lời cho quý vị. Thì, à, à, tôi xin được à, thay mặt để mà to say uh, thank you word to uh, say your all. Very much for leading the uh, this weekend retreat and thank you very much for your dharma talk and uh, is it for the end of the Lunar New Year in the Vietnamese calendar. And uh, it's uh, a very good way to end the uh, old year, the Vietnamese year with the uh, this retreat and with the Dhamma talk. So on behalf of the yogis and the center, we uh, would like to express our heartfelt thanks to you. And uh, we wish you uh, uh, all the best and uh, the new year coming and a happy new year and we, we wish you again uh, next week when we celebrate the uh, Vietnamese New Year here uh, a week from today and uh, thank you very much. The uh, yogi and the people had the offer to you. Uh,